Hello and thank you for joining us. In this installment of Hadoop Essentials, we'll be covering Core Hadoop. We're going to talk about what Core Hadoop is and the value it brings to the enterprise. We'll talk about the Hadoop Distributed File System, or HDFS as it's known, the distributed file system underneath the clustered storage. We'll talk about the framework known as MapReduce. But first, we need to define what Hadoop really is. Apache Hadoop is governed under the license of the Apache Software Foundation. It is a project at apache.org. But Apache Hadoop or Hadoop is an open source data management platform with scale out storage and processing capabilities. It's unique in its approach to dealing with massive amounts of data and the processing of that data. Underlying Hadoop are two fundamental tools and applications. The Hadoop Distributed File System, HDFS, that's a self-healing, high-bandwidth clustered storage. And then on top of that sits the Compute Ability, and that is MapReduce. It's a framework that splits a task or a job across processors that are nearest to the data. It distributes that, that task across nodes. The Hadoop approach is unique in that they distribute large amounts of data across thousands of commodity hardware nodes. No longer are you buying very expensive pieces of hardware to scale up, now you can scale out. In addition to that, you can process the data in parallel. So not only do you gain storage capacity when you scale out, you gain processing capacity. Obviously, data is replicated across the cluster for reliability as well. One of the most unique pieces to Hadoop by far is the ability to move the analysis to the data. Instead of making a copy of the data and taking that copy to the analysis or to the compute, we now chunk up the analysis and send it to the data that's nearest for that task to take place. Then with the scanning of data, we avoid random seeks and it's much easier to process this way. Underlying core Hadoop is HDFS, the Hadoop Distributed File System. The HDFS architecture is fairly simple. You have the main name node that governs over the namespace and manages the blocks or the data itself, where the data is located. It keeps a journal or a journal log and a, a metadata uh, image that's a checkpoint image. And if a secondary name node is employed, it does the same. And that block map on the name node keeps track of where each block of each file is located on each of the data nodes. It is a logical file system, so data is not maintained contiguously on a data disk. It's broken up logically. In terms of data organization, there is meta the metadata. It's organized into files and directories, and it utilizes Linux-like permissions. The files themselves are divided into uniform size blocks. The default size is 64 megabytes, and it's distributed across clusters. If utilized, HDFS can be rack aware. So not only does, it, does the name node know which node the data is located on, it also knows where that node is in relation to racks and where those racks are located in proximity to each other. And in order to avoid corruption, we utilize sizing checksums. The data node is where the data is stored. It's a common node that simply runs the data node daemon. It's a slave to the name node. It manages blocks, reads, and writes for HDFS. It also manages block replication. It will proactively ping the name node to get instructions. It's known as a heartbeat. And if that heartbeat is not received by the name node, the name node will wait for a certain amount of time and then when it determines that data node is no longer responding it will remove that data node from its list of available data nodes and start to replicate data that was on that data node onto other data nodes. So this is a diagram of how the heartbeat works. To access data from a client application, a JVM or Java virtual machine will request a file or directory, create it, open it, delete it. The name node will give approval. 
The Java Virtual Machine will then request a block. The name node will then provide the block ID and the list of data nodes where that data is located. And then the operation will be performed directly on the data node, a read, a write, or delete. And then once it's completed, a return is sent back to the JVM. The important point here to note is that the name node is not in the data path. It simply stores the information about the file. Now that we know how data is stored and distributed, let's talk about how analysis is done through the MapReduce framework. So a job is submitted by a client to the job tracker. The job tracker then distributes, the, breaks up the job into tasks and distributes those tasks to the task trackers based on the availability of where the data resides. Once that task is distributed, the task tracker on the local data node, if you will, will turn around and launch a Java virtual machine to execute the task. And then we'll periodically send task status back to the job tracker. At a high level, this is what happens. The mapper functions will do their mapping. The data is then shuffled across the network to the reducer functions. We're going to walk through that. So when data first is located and needed the input split, if we call it, the input format will generate a key value pair. From that key value pair, the mapper function begins, and the map method will output a secondary key and value pair into the map output buffer for every single iteration of that value. The records then are sorted and spilled to disk when the buffer reaches a threshold. And then eventually, all of that mapper output becomes the reducer input. So on each data node, you have the mapper output being the reducer input. The reducer then fetches that data from the mappers, brings it into, memory in, into the in-memory buffer, creates its spill files, merges the input from that of the in-memory the in buffer and the spill files, and then creates the reducer. And that reducer output is then put back into HDFS. So the key value pairs of MapReduce, you have a key value, key one, value one come into the mapper. The mapper then produces key value two, or key two value two, that's sent to the shuffle sort. At that point, you have the key with all the various values of that key two value two. The reducer then produces the final key, key three, with value three. There's a very simple version of this in Apache Hadoop, the word count application or the word count problem job. You can run that on core Hadoop with MapReduce and see how this output is done. So within MapReduce there are two different APIs that are well known and you can find them at org.apache.hadoop. Prior to Hadoop.20 which is known as Hadoop 1.0 it was the old API and that was org.apache.hadoop.mapred. With Hadoop 1.0 and future versions it utilizes org.apache.hadoop.mapreduce. So to run a MapReduce job, the first thing you do is you make sure that the input files or the files are in HDFS you want to work on. If the output directory already exists, you need to delete it. Then you use a Hadoop function to execute the job, and then you can view the output files. So the example of that would be Hadoop jar, word count dot jar, word count job input slash file dot txt result. And that will output the, the, the result of word count into the result directory. So in summary, Apache Hadoop is an open source data management platform that brings massively scalable storage and processing together. And the two primary components of that are MapReduce and HDFS. With Hadoop, we no longer talk in terms of megabytes and gigabytes. We talk very easily in terms of terabytes, petabytes, and exabytes. Thousands of nodes 
of storage and commodity hardware. HDFS, or the Hadoop Distributed File System, is the distributed file system that provides that scalability, high availability, and throughput for the application data. And then MapReduce, as we said, is the software framework for processing vast amounts of data in parallel on these large clusters. For further information, you can go to www.hortonworks.com.